In this video, I'm going to take you through all the various bare metal programming references that we tend to use when using Atmel Studio 7 with a specific board. So how do we access these? What do we use each for? And I'm going to use a very simple context of turning on a LED when, and then blinking with the delay a little later. I'm going to use the device data sheet to get an overview of the peripheral, typically with a block diagram. I'm going to use the data sheet from IOView in a more specific context of understanding the registers of the device that I'm working with. I'm going to use IOView when debugging to test functionality and to understand the current configuration of the device. Kit user guides and schematics help me understand what is again connected to the specific pins so I can use that functionality. The editor lists a lot of what is in the device header files so we understand the structs in the device header files and how the editor helps us use those. AVR libc gives us some basic functions um, to use with C libraries with AVR such as delays etc and using interrupts and then finally Atmel start is quite useful just to understand the default configurations of the clocks etc in a very graphical kind of way and I'll use this even if I'm doing bare metal development. Okay let's get going. I have this board plugged in so the welcome page is up. Clicking on the device data sheet page I come to the 817 product page. Here, under documentation, I can find the complete data sheet and under development tools, I can choose the kit that I have and I see that there's the 817 Explain Pro. And here I can see the design documentation, a zip file and the Explain Pro user guide. The user guide has much of the same information that I will use in the schematic. So once I have got that information and downloaded it, here you'll see the design, the data sheet, the user guide, and then the design documentation. So what I'm going to start with is the data sheet. And if I'm looking at ports, the kind of thing that I like to look at the data sheet for is the block diagram. So I can see there's a pin control register on this port with pull-up enables. There's an output and direction. And just reading down to the description here, I can see that the port registers have a data direction and a data output value. Okay, so this gives me an overview of how it works. What I'm going to do now is look for these registers in the IO view. I need a quickly a project for the 817. And note that I could also access the data sheet here. I can open IO view, I slash, and, and here we can have a look at the port registers. To use more specific information of them from the data sheet, I would tend to go F1 on a specific register. And here I can see that writing a 1 to the direction configures and enables it as an output. So Consulting the schematic of the kit, I can see that the user LED is connected to port B4. So I must set port B4 as an output and I must set it low to turn the LED on. If I start debugging and break, I'm able to directly start manipulating these register bits. So there I can see bit 4, um, the direction, and actually my LED here has come on straight away, and as I click this, the LED comes on and off. So now we've set it as an output. Now the out register sets whether the pin is high or low. And again, as I click on this, this turns it off because it's set it to a 1, which is high. And clicking here again, we can turn the LED on and off. So we are pretty confident in the functionality of what we're trying to build up. And we can start to use this write some code. So port B dot and we're wanting to set direction. So here we have a suggestion list in the editor and actually in the next video I'm going to be covering a lot more of the editor features and how they help us write code. For now we'll notice that as we start typing there's a context field of port B where we currently are and then definition field which shows how this is defined. So if we click direction 
Um, so you can see that that's a certain register also within a port struct. And if we go to the definition with Alt G or clicking Go, we can see that we actually open up the device header file. So here, this list of registers is pretty much what we had in our suggestion list, which came up in the editor. And you can see how the, the device header file is referenced by the editor. So let's move forward. There's a pin bit mask and setting the direction, stop debugging and program the code. And the LED is on as expected. Now what I'd like to do is toggle it every 500 milliseconds and AVR libc is going to help me do that. And you can see AVR libc is a free software project to provide high quality C library um, with GCC on Atmel AVR. Clicking on the user manual, I can see the library reference, delay, and here I can see what I can do and functions available to me when I use this. And I can see that I need an include util slash delay, and there's an FCPU description. First including it, util delay, and now I can do the, use one of the functions and I can go port out toggle to toggle the pin. Okay, so now compiling this code, I get a warning of this FCPU not being defined. I'm going to find a solution for that just now, but for now I can program and I can see my LED is blinking. Well, viewing IO view again while debugging, I can have a look at the clock control and I can see that, okay, my clock is set to the 20 megahertz internal oscillator and the prescalar division is set to six. And so then I have a 3.333 megahertz clock. So I could define the, uh, the, the CPU, the frequency here directly. But I'm also gonna show you how you can use Atmel Start to do some of the basics. So if I create a new project for Atmel Start for the board that I have, the clock diagram here gives me quite a good overview and here we can see that same default frequency. Also, if I click view code and under config, I can find that define that I needed in my project. Also note that it's quite useful under Pinmux to show the board labels and here I can see how the board is laid out with LED or the UARTs etc. So going back to my project, adding the define of the CPU in and rebuilding my project, I see that now we have no warnings. So that's been a bit of a whirlwind tour of the different programming references typical for bare metal development, how we use IOView to test functionality, um, the role of the data sheet, both um, F1 linked through the IOView or um, using the PDF version, kit user guides and schematics, device header files. And um, one thing to note is there's a very good application note, AVR 1000, describing the structure of these of these header files um, well worth reading. Then the editor. In some of the next videos we will cover much more of the editor features but we just gave you a little bit of a taste today. Thank you.